SciTech Nutrition, premium quality products, state-of-the-art look, uncompromised ingredient quality. Our products work and taste good. www.scitechnutrition.com. Gorillaware. I'm standing here at the Gorilla Wear booth with Dennis James with his new Dennis James uh, Gorilla Wear signature series he's got here. How'd know. that come about? I don't know. I mean, they came out with uh, jerseys and they said, why don't I, you know, asked me basically, yeah. what's your favorite number to put it on the jersey? I, I took my birthday, so 31. So uh, I thought that know, was your age. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> actually, it works perfect. <laughs> No, they came out with the jerseys, and uh, actually, I'm pretty, I like them. They're pretty good. Yeah, they, I don't see a big Rami line, but I see a Dennis James line. That's pretty impressive. Is that because you're a legend? No, no, a, Rami has one, too. Oh, he does. And Dennis Wolf. We all get one. Yeah. What is the Rami line called? BR. <laughs> what does that stand for? Big Rami. Oh, I thought it stood for big, uh, I don't know. <laughs> big, I don't know. One either. of the mill, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. No. What do you he, think about Rami? You know, moving, he's going to be competing at the Arnold Brazil in a couple weeks. No, I heard he's doing the New York Pro. Oh, first he's doing the New York Pro, then he's doing That's Brazil. That's what I heard. I'm not sure. How do you think he'll do, I mean, how do you think he'll do? And how do you think he'll look better? He's not working with you. He's not working with Aceto now. We hear he could be working with George Farrow. No one's quite sure because we can't trust anything that comes out of his mouth. <laughs> I have no idea. I have no idea what he looks like. Mm -hmm. I doesn't know what he, I have no idea what he looks like. Right. I don't know what he's doing. Right. You know, all I know is that um, if he wants a New Year Pro, he needs to bring his A game because Victor's doing it, and Victor looks pretty good for four weeks out. So I can't say nothing about him because, like I said, I saw him at the uh, in, in uh, Columbus. We had a few, a few, a little chat, but you know, regarding his condition or his shape or his, my, his state of mind right now. I have no idea. We all know that Big Rami probably should be Mr. Olympia one day. Do you think he ever will be? Um, if he gets his, his mind together. If he gets his mind together and he starts doing the right thing and not the things that's going to, you know, that people tell him to do. You know what I mean? He doesn't have uh, uh, a lot of saying about what's going on in his life right now. I have a feeling unless he changes that right. and starts making his own decisions. Uh, and if he does, then he will be, in my eyes, if he gets everything together, an unbeatable Mr. Olympia. Unbeatable. That's yes. coming from Dennis James, and I, I, I tend to agree with him. Yeah. All right, I want to ask you a couple questions. Arnold Schwarzenegger at the Arnold Classic on Sunday morning seminar made a statement that he felt that the judges should move towards a more aesthetic-looking bodybuilder physique. He used Cedric McMillan's name in the mix. What did you think about that statement? Um, I wasn't there. I didn't hear it, but I was told. And uh, I'm not sure... You know, he talked about Cedric, so I heard that he uh, he said that Cedric should have placed better. He didn't necessarily say he should have won, but he should have placed better. Well, yeah, and, and, and I believe that Cedric is probably the most perfect physique on any bodybuilding stage. You like his physique? I love his physique. I love his physique. He has the height. He has the width. He has basically a flawless physique. He has the shape, the muscle bellies. All he needs to do is get that super dry condition, and I think he can be another unbeatable Mr. Olympia. Now, when we talk about, you know, I'm not saying, you know, should we go back to aesthetic? That's the one. I mean, he's an aesthetic, pleasing True. athlete, so I don't think there was anything wrong. So I'm not sure really what they're talking about or what Arnold was saying, but I, I can understand that, you know, uh, um, bodybuilding shouldn't be about, you know, bloated stomachs and, you know what I mean? Because I know firsthand how that goes. So, and, and I think he has a, he has a, um, a valid point. You know, that's a valid point. I'm not. I don't know if we need to change the judges system. I don't think that needs to happen. But you know, what they need to do is just probably punish people that do not control the midsection, maybe a little bit more. So, because if they don't get punished, they will not. They will not fix it. You're right. I agree with you. That's. I think yeah. that the judges have to put their foot down as to what they yeah. want and what they don't if want. If they stop punishing that, then I think everybody will start working on that more and start controlling and things. We've seen that happen before. Yeah. It, it was getting out of control. It's gotten better, and then yeah. maybe it got a little bit out of control. Yeah. Talk to me about FIBO here. There was supposed to be a pro show here. They canceled it seven days out. As an athlete, as a guy who competed, what would that mean to you? And, and, and what should be done, you think, to, to give these guys restitution? Well, I found out a week before the show was supposed to happen that they canceled the show, and I had... Uh, I was working with Ford, who was basically, I mean, at his absolute best, and he was, in my eyes, going to be, would have been a clear winner 
you know, going for a, a qualification for the Olympia. Now they canceled the show a week out from the show. Now this is what I think. As an athlete, we sign in contracts to do your show. We have to pay $5,000 if we True. don't compete for any obvious like health you know, related issues. If I pull out because I don't feel like it or I can't afford it no more, then I have to pay $5,000 fine. Now as a promoter, if you pull out of the show a week before where the guys already bought the airline tickets, they made their accommodation reservations, they dieted for that show, which could have been, because the next show is in four weeks, so that's an extra four weeks of dieting, which costs a lot of money. I believe that these guys should all get kind of reimbursed for something. So I would have never paid the prize money back to the promoter for that, and would give that prize money would to split it up between the athletes. Good it's the guys who were registered ahead of time. Exactly. I would split it up. Because you know, because as a promoter, I know you got to pay the sanction fee, you got to pay the price money up front. So that should be with the IFB, and I believe that they should just give it to the athletes. Good. Talk to me about Gorilla Wear. Yes. Uh, this is a, a terrific booth here. They had one at the Arnold. You were there as well. I, I, everyone's walking around with Gorilla Wear clothing on. Is this the new company to look out for? Gorilla Wear is back. Yeah, Gorilla's been around for we know a very, we were kids. Yeah, for a very long time, and then they disappeared in the U.S. They were always here in Europe not as strong as they are now and they relaunched the u.s last year and it's going great you know they sponsored the olympia they sponsored the arnold so gorilla wear is on his way up get your dennis james number 31 jersey here at gorilla wear all weekend long you can check out their website they're going to be in the united states for the mr olympia for the ronnie coleman signature and i know they're going to be your show right my show the dennis, your dennis show? james classic may 23rd mesa arizona don't miss it that show's gotten yeah. big huh it's my second time. The first show was huge. I heard you had a tremendous turnout for the first yeah, show. Yeah, over 400 competitors. Yeah. So you're making money now as a promoter now, too. Well, I should have done that 10 years ago. Now, yeah, you probably have 10 shows. Yeah. Do you, what do you think of all the different avenues? Supplement company, clothing, promoter, professional bodybuilder. What Gym now. The gym now is gym? Oh, you got the gym yeah, in Australia. Yeah. <laughs> what, what's the most profitable? Um, I would say... Um, Promoting? Promoting is very good, yeah. you know, if you do it right, if you have yeah. a good show, you're going to make yeah. a little bit of money. Yeah. You know, an athlete's prep is very good, and Even the gym you, is awesome. You got, how many athletes you got now you work uh, with? You don't even know, right? 200. 200? 200. How do you, do you text all these guys? It's crazy, it's crazy, yeah. yeah. Well, you must be a real fun to be around, you must be on but that phone know, all but the time. They're, they're not all active, you know, if you have 200, you know, guys on the team, you know, yeah. I have phases where you probably know best yeah where you have it's nutty 10 guys competing at the same day in six different countries right, right. so there's there's no sleeping 24 yeah, hours yeah, yeah, you know yeah. i have phases and this weekend is one and then uh you know this is the season the season yeah. starts yeah. everywhere so dennis burns through a lot of cell phone batteries so if you want to get on his texting list get in line dennis great <laughs> seeing you man <laughs>